Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Van coming to you from Ohio Nature Education. We have a uh, special activity that we're going to do today. In a minute, I'm going to uh, hop out of the seat and someone else will come in. Uh, it, uh, it's Tara Hudson, she is the branch manager. We are at the Northwest Branch of Fairfield County District Library. And this is a collaboration that we're doing together. I don't know if you're aware, but October 24th through the 31st, uh, October 24th through the 31st, sorry, I'm so used to wearing these that we're doing this safely that I guess when I'm recording, we don't need to have this on. All right, anyway, October 24th through the 31st is National Bat Week. And uh, we at Ohio Nature Education will be posting activities on our um, YouTube channel. So uh, we are here today, like I said, a collaboration. Um, I'm gonna let Tara step in here and do something for you about bat books. And then I will be back to share some bat facts. And mm, let's see, I guess I'm gonna share some live bats with you. All right, thanks. Back in a bit. Mm -hmm. All right, greetings everybody. Thank you for, you know, tuning in today. I'm gonna talk about some awesome bat books that we have here at the library. Now, if you're in Fairfield County, of course, you can go online and you can reserve these. You can give us a call. Um, you can come into the library. If you're at a different library, say Licking County or Columbus, we all have these books because bats are really amazing animals. So we have stories about bats and the most popular one is going to be Stella Luna. Um, this is by Janelle Cannon and it's a story of a bat. Now when Mrs. Van does programs, a lot of times she does uses this book Stella Luna to tell us about our um, animal cousins, the bats. And maybe she'll tell you why we call them our animal cousins. Bats here, so check out Stella Luna. I'll show you some of the pretty pictures that are here in the bat in this book. Okay, some of Mrs. Van's favorites are bats at the ball game, bats in the band, and of course bats at the beach. Okay, so we all have these. These this is Bob Brian lies. Okay, and so these are about some what bats like to do at night when they come out. So you'll want to check those out for sure. We have a bats around the clock. Look at how fancy they are dressed by Kathy Appet, Appelt, sorry. And I think I marked a page. Look at these guys. Don't they look really silly? Super silly bats. And then we have little bats Halloween because when we think of bats, we a lot of times we think of Halloween and they can be kind of scary, but bats aren't scary. They do some really amazing things for us. But this is little bats Halloween story, okay? Uh, and that's by Diane Mayer. I like this one. Look at how pretty that one is. Can you see that? This is by Ari Burke. And this is Night Song. Okay, about a little bat. Um, and it's kind of dark. And a little scary looking. But look at how cute that bat is. Okay, get that one. And then this is Bat Loves the Night. Okay, and this one is by Nic uh, Nicola Davies. And I think this one is cool because it's got stuff on the front and then that back page too. This is a nice one. So these are all stories. So these are our fiction bat books. Now, if you go into the nonfiction books or the books that are have true facts in them, you're gonna go to the 599.4s. And my favorite one is Hello Bumblebee Bat. Okay, there are real bats called bumblebee bats and they are the size of bumblebees. Look at how cute that is. Okay, so this you'll learn about bumblebee bat and what his life is like, but it's true. So you'll learn about that. If you like Fly Guy, who doesn't like Fly Guy and Buzz? There's a book about Fly Guy Presents Bats. Okay, and then if you're interested in other animals, of course there's plenty more Fly Guys with sharks and insects and all kinds of things. We have the uh, uh, eyewitness books, The Amazing Bats, a close-up look at some of the world's most amazing bats. Okay, so this has lots of facts. All right, so if you came to story time on Tuesday, we gave you a little bat book 
um, for you to cut out and design. Um, and so you could get some of these nonfiction books and write some of the facts that you learned about bats, okay? And then Gail Gibbons writes some really interesting books. Um, she's up there as a favorite author because she writes um, nonfiction books, a lot, several, about different animals and stuff. And this one is about bats, and this is about echolocation, okay, how they catch their food. So if you want any of these books here, just go ahead and call your local library. Come on in and see us, and we'd love to get you some new bat books. Now we're going to go back to Mrs. Van and learn a little bit about our animal cousins. All right, so let's get Mrs. Van in here. Thanks, Tara. All right. First, before we get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about Ohio Nature Education. And I always feel obligated to because if I'm sharing live wild animals with you, all right, these are not domestic pets, I feel I need to explain why we have them. Number one, we're a, a nonprofit organization that I founded uh, 23 and a half years ago. And basically, we have permits from Division of Wildlife and U.S. Fish and Wildlife. These are permits uh, that allow us to keep the animals. Uh, all of our animals, and we have about 45 to 50 wild animals, are animals, not only, most of them are native to Ohio, so you would find them in the different habitats of Ohio, uh, but they are non-releasable. In other words, they are, there is something wrong with them as to why they can't uh, return to the wild. So they are not our pets. Um, I'm going to share the bats with you right now. They are two of the five bats that we provide a home for. And just so you know, when you see us out and about, unless we are doing a live feed from our facility in Licking County, when you see the bats or other animals in crates like this, no, they don't live in these crates, okay? This is just how we transport them, okay? So I'm going to put the bats right here. And Tara, you have my blessing in putting the bats right up there, very good, because they really don't need to see me. And just be aware whether there's glare that you're getting on your camera or not, okay? So these are two of the five big brown bats that we provide a home for. They all have some type of injury that um, it, it does not allow for them to be able to fly around uh, and live on their own and get their own food. So. These are both big brown bats. That Those are the only species that we provide a home for. Um, and so let's talk about some bat facts, okay? And um, you can adjust that if you want to, Tara. You can just kind of push the, um, it's kind of flexible. Good. There you go. Okay. All right. And if Don't you need to move it up, that's fine. If they start moving, we'll hand them over to Tara and have them... Um, have you have a closer look at them. They are nocturnal. So sometimes when I'm out and about, people will say to me, are those live? And I'll say, yes, but many of our animals are nocturnal. So that's a wonderful word for an animal that is active at night and sleeps during the day. So, and people ask me that, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. I'm a visual learner. In other words, you can tell me all you want about something, but if you show it to me, I'm going to learn it a whole lot better. It makes more of an impression. So this is a, a real bat, and it's, excuse me, I say this over and over again. This is the best way that I can explain it to you. This is a real red bat, and it's a real dead red bat, okay? So this is an animal that died on its own for whatever reason, maybe hit by car, caught by cat. And we have permits to take these specimens, I call them study skins, and preserve them and use them as a teaching tool because... Even if I put on my gloves, which I would to handle the bats, right? They're a wild animal. They, my bats would not like it for me to spread their wing apart, even though it wouldn't hurt them. They're not going to like that, all right? They're not going to allow me to do that. They're going to get cranky and grouchy and try to bite at the glove. But study skins, it's a sad thing that the animals are dead, but it's a wonderful teaching tool in that it allows you to see things up close that you normally wouldn't get to see. So just keep in mind when you see us out and about with study skins, and it could be pelts, it could be skulls, it could be an owl foot. These were animals that were already dead when we saw them. All right, so this is a red bat, one of 10 different species of bats we have in Ohio. We used to say 11, we've, um, we've changed that now. All right, and these are big brown bats, even a little baby. 
all right? And what's really cool and why Tara was saying um, there are cousins, well, a couple reasons. Number one, we are part of the mammal family. And guess what? So are bats. So they are our bat cousins. And here's why study skins and visual specimens, study skins, whatever you want to call them, are such an awesome learning tool. Because not only are bats our cousins, but they're very much like us in some of our skeletal structure. So if you look at your hand, we have a thumb and four fingers. Guess what? Bats do too. They have a thumb and four fingers just like you and I do. Now, where we kind of diverge and we're different is that they have long finger bones and short arm bones. We're quite the opposite. So over the skeletal structure are two layers of skin and it's very leathery. And they kind of use it like maybe a butterfly net. So the 10 species of bats that live in Ohio are all insect eaters, okay? So they fly around at night eating mosquitoes. Ouch, mosquitoes, guys that not only make us itch, but spread diseases like the West Nile virus. All right, so, but they're also eating moths and all sorts of other insects. So they're flying around and they hit an insect with their wing and use their tail membrane like a net to scoop it up. All right, so what we do a lot at Ohio Nature Education is encourage people that how we live our lives affect our wild cousins. And what I say over and over and over again is we need nature and we need bats. Again, not only do they eat mosquitoes that spread diseases, but guess what? They protect the farmer's crops, our food, by eating a lot of insects that would eat crop pests. All right, here's another way that we need bats. Now I said there are 10 different kinds or species of bats in Ohio, but around the world there are more than 1,300 and different species or kind of bats. Now in Ohio, we have micro bats, small bats, but around the world, if you read Stella Luna or you've been to any of the zoos that have what we call the fruit eating bats, the flying foxes, they can have a wingspan of six feet. Guys, this is not even six feet, okay? All right, so the, when you have that many different species of an animal, they're not all gonna eat insects, right? So really quickly, I just wanna share with you my bat box, okay? And then tell you how else that we need bats, we need nature. Okay, so yes, we know that bats around the world eat bugs, so I'm taking out the mosquitoes, the moths, the mayflies, on and on we go, right? Okay, but I wanna talk to you about two separate groups of bats that are very, very important. There are some that eat nectar, okay? Nectar that we get from flowers, right? Okay. And then there are some like Stella Luna and her mom that are fruit eating bats, okay? These are very special to us because the nectar eaters are going from plant to plant pollinating, giving us more plants. The fruit eaters eat fruit, seed and all, all right? And they are seed dispersers. So they are planting seeds for us, okay? So guess what? These two groups, the nectar eaters and the fruit eaters, guess what they help us to get? So raise your hand for me, okay? If you like bananas, do you eat bananas? Think of that. How about peaches? Think of that. Cashews, dates, and mangoes? Think of that. Carob. I've not personally had it. I think you get it from a um, health food store. They say it's a substitute for chocolate. In my world, there is no substitute for chocolate. All right, plantain, the red bananas. Avocados are a bat-dependent product. Figs for fig newtons, cloves. We're gonna be doing a lot of cooking and baking coming up here during the holiday season. That would be one of the um, one of the spices or herbs, whatever, that we're going to use. Balsa wood, okay? If you buy the little cuties at the store, the little wooden box they come in, I, or the little airplanes that we used to, I'm aging myself now, I think they still make those, where you buy little airplanes in a plastic bag and you punch them out, they're made of this real thin wood. And I know, and this is for adults only, I know that the adults that are watching this have only heard of this product, but tequila is a bat dependent product. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So there goes the fact that yes, we need bats and we need nature, okay? All right, so. That should help you uh, love a bat. And by the way, Tara was talking about... They're moving around. Oh, so. good. Yes. Take that opportunity. Oh. Oh, they're arguing. They are arguing. Now, 
earlier, Taryn showed a picture out of a book and she said they were echolocating. I come from an age where, you know what I was taught when I was a little girl about bats? That bats swoop down, uh, bite your neck, suck your blood, turn you into a vampire, and they all get stuck in your hair. Now, aren't those silly little stories, okay? Those are myths and old wives' tales. So, one of the biggest myths that we have in the wildlife world is that, well, there's two. One is owls turn their heads all the way around. We'll talk about that at a later program, but no, they do not. Three-fourths of the way around. And the other wildlife myth, myth is that bats are blind. Bats are not blind, especially our nocturnal bats here in Ohio. They're active at night, so of course they can see, but much better is their ability to hear. And they take it beyond that by emitting a sound too high pitch for us to hear. So this would not be them echolocating. I would need something called a bat detector to hear them echolocating. This is just them arguing for whatever reason. But they emit a sound too high pitch for our ears and the echoes bounce back and tell them there's something in front of me. Here's the size of it, the texture of it, the direction it's going and how fast it's going. So bats are not blind. But so we can't hear their echolocation sounds but boy, you just heard them arguing. And I don't know what they're arguing about, but my goodness, it's if you're one, if you have brothers and sisters, you know all about arguing, right? Okay, so before I part ways uh, with you, since Tara was bringing up books, I wanted to recommend a couple books. And Tara always keeps me in very good uh, wildlife and nature books and whatnot. So if, this is not gonna be for preschoolers, but if you really wanna know the ins and outs of one of, of our, well, we used to say it was a common species of bat, the little brown bat. And unfortunately, those of you that are familiar with white nose syndrome, uh, and it's a disease that has hit our bat population, and it's really caused their numbers to, to plummet. So we really have to really, really, really take care of our bats now. But this is a wonderful book, like A Year in the Life of the Little Brown Bat, The Hidden World of the Little Brown Bat by Barbara Bash. So I'm going to recommend this maybe for kids, I would say maybe fifth grade and up. This is good. This is so many good facts in here. I love it. Okay. And then for maybe junior high and adults, you know, sometimes some of these um, science-based books go right over our head. This is In Ohio's Backyard bats and there's also in Ohio's backyard spiders I believe there's quite a few of these but this is if you can ever get a book that's specific to Ohio the trees of Ohio the wildflowers of Ohio the butterflies of Ohio jump on it because it's going to be just specific to our own backyard but I'm going to recommend this book because yes it has a lot of facts but it doesn't have words this big in it so very uh, easy to read and understand Okay, in Ohio's backyard bats. So I hope you've learned some things to appreciate bats, not only during uh, National Bat Week, but all days of the week. Uh, every day of the year, how important bats are. All right, so we want to thank uh, Tara for allowing us in and Fairfield County Library for allowing us in. And hopefully we'll do more of these collaborations, but we wish you a happy National Bat Week. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye.